there. Welcome to the Tink and Bobble podcast. It has been a hot minute. I'm Sierra, your host. I live here in southern Indiana with my husband Josh and my two puffs who are joining me today. There's Evie up here behind me. Oh, big yawn. And Boomer's down here. Um, they aren't used to being in here when I'm filming, so they might get a little... A little weird. Evie wants to lick my face. <laughs> Anyways, hi! It's episode 10! Okay, I might need to have them calm down. Up, up. Come on. Lie down. Lie down. Okay, hopefully they chill out. Um, it has been over two months since I posted a YouTube video. Life has been kind of crazy busy. Nothing bad. Lots of good things, actually. It's just been really busy, and I have not found the time to sit down and film. I have been knitting a ton though and I have a ton of acquisitions. As you can see I have basically an entire yarn store here behind me. So anyways I have a lot to share with you. Uh, this episode will probably be super long so grab a drink if you have one. I have the rest of my pumpkin chai. It's October 1st. I didn't even say that. Happy spoopy season. I'm so stinking excited. You might have noticed if you've if you're what? If you're a returning viewer, you might notice that I have a new bedspread. Um, we desperately needed new pillows for our bed and new sheets and a new duvet cover. So I got this, not because it's spooky season, but it is fitting. I'm wearing like kind of an orangish reddish color and a black bedspread behind me. But anyways, I'm super rusty. I feel like this intro has kind of been all over the place already. Uh, we'll see how this turns out, but I have a ton to share with you, and I'm so excited to be back. I'm so excited. I've missed filming so much, and I have, I've, I'm on Instagram every day, scrolling and like watching stories and stuff, but I have not posted. I have so many projects that I need to take pictures of and post. I hope the glare on my glasses is not too bad. By the way, these are new glasses. They're blue light blocking glasses from TIJN. I'll have these linked down below if anyone's interested. Hair's a little crazy, but it's not dirty today. I showered this morning. That's why it's kind of crazy, because it's like half wet and doesn't want to behave. <laughs> Anyways, let's just do this thing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Where do I even start? Finished objects. Okay. I honestly, like, I have so much stuff that I've been knitting on that I had to go back and like watch my last podcast episode and look at my notes to remember what I even talked about like what I've already shared and what I haven't shared and there's just so much so let's start with finished objects all of these except one I think are things you've already seen so the first thing I finished super excited about these is my pair of little boxes socks sorry if the light's kind of crazy I feel like stuff's gonna get blown out because it's like mid-afternoon so the sun's really bright these are my Little Boxes socks. The pattern is by Summerly Designs. I think she's Summerly Knits on Instagram. And, oh, before I get too ahead of myself, everything that I talk about will be linked down below. Um, like patterns, designers, the yarn, the needles that I used, everything. And I will just go ahead and say there's a lot of socks in this episode. So anytime I talk about vanilla socks, I'm using the Crazy Sock Ladies vanilla socks patterns, and I will have her link down below so you can find those but it's gonna get kind of redundant to say Vanilla Sock on Nine Inch or whatever by Crazy Sock Lady every time I show Vanilla Socks. So just for future reference, if I'm ever talking about just knitting plain Vanilla Socks, I'm using her patterns and I will have them linked down below. So yeah, everything, everything I use will be linked down below and everyone I talk about and all of that. So Little Box of Socks by Summerly Designs. The yarn used in these, the um, main color, so like the color that's filling in the boxes, is the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Sock Squad. I believe this was month June. I think this was June. I know the color name is called Summer Sorbet. I don't think you can buy these colorways outside of the Sock Squad, but I will have her website linked down below just in case. And so the Summer Sorbet was the main color, which is this variegated, it has like greens, and it'll be easier to show on a different pair of socks here in a second. Greens and yellows and pinks. And then it came with the orange mini skein that I used for the outline of the boxes. And then the pink on the heels, toes, and cuff is leftovers, scraps from my Brighter Day socks. It is Knit Picks, 
hawthorn kettle dye, I believe in the color Daphne. So that's the pink, and then as you can see, since I was using scraps, I ran out and had to use my main color just for the end of the heel there. This was my first time doing an afterthought heel, which I enjoyed, but I think I'm gonna keep doing heel flap and gussets because I just like the way they fit and the way they look but I did have fun doing this for my first time. So there's my finished object. I will also say I'll have my Ravelry page linked down below and I have project pages for, well, not at the moment, but by the time this episode goes up, I will have project pages for all of the projects I talk about. And in there will be like my notes for how many rounds I did and all that kind of stuff if I made any pattern adjustments. So yeah. I'm kind of going to breeze through these finished objects because I talked about them already and I don't remember what I've said about them and I have so many other things to talk about. So if you have any questions about anything, you can always comment down below or message me on Instagram or email me. I have an email. I don't know if I ever talk about that. But yeah, first finished object. Second finished object is another pair of socks. I'll put one of them on the blockers here. Actually, I'm pretty sure my husband has worn these and they haven't been washed, so they might look a little rough. <laughs> These are the socks I cast on for Sock Week. If you all follow Nitty Natty, which I'm sure you do, every summer, the same week as Shark Week on TV, she does Sock Week and the challenge is to knit. I think she just does one sock in a week. So this year I cast on this pair of socks. The yarn is again from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. <laughs> These are for my husband, so they're too big on my blockers. This is Farmer Daughter, Farmer's Daughter Fibers. I can't remember what month it is, but the colorway is Lone Large. It's this is really pretty. It's mostly blue, a bunch of different shades of blue, and then it's got some green. And there's even like some kind of mustardy speckles throughout. And these are just vanilla socks. I finished the first sock. Did I finish the first sock on time? Maybe I talked about this last episode. I don't remember if I finish these on time or not. But here's my second sock. And yeah, not much to say about these. Just plain vanilla socks. My husband loves them. He's super knit worthy. I want to knit him a sweater this year. We'll see if that happens, but he loves getting hand knit socks. So that makes me happy. Oh, I will say I knit these, I should mention, I knit these on nine inch circular needles. All of my needles are Chowgu brand. So I'm not gonna say that every time either. I knit these on the heels, toes, and cuffs I did on a US 1 and the color work I did on a US 1.5. And, and then for all of my just regular vanilla socks, I've been knitting them on Chowgu 9 inch circulars US 1, 2.25 millimeter. And these were 72 stitches for my husband. And then let's just go ahead and do my last finished pair of socks. So these, I had a ton of yarn left over from my Little Boxes socks, the main color, because you don't use very much of any of the three colors, especially since they're shorties. So I had enough left over to make myself a full pair of socks with the Summer Sorbet yarn. So here's this. Ooh, it's getting super blown out. I'll bring it up up close. There you go. It's still kind of blown out. I don't know if there's any way to help that, but... Super pretty. You can see the colorway a little better here than you can in the little boxes socks, but here's my second sock. I have a finished pair. Again, vanilla socks for myself. I do 64 stitches and I knit these nine inch on nine inch circulars. US 1, 2.25 millimeter. Super cute. I feel like I knit these up really fast. I don't remember dates on when I started and finished these, but I just fly through vanilla socks, man. They're so much fun. So yeah. That's my last pair of finished socks. And then my last finished object is super exciting. It was a test knit. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it. And this has been like folded up in my little cubbies back there for a while, so I don't know how good this will look. But I finished my Cleo cardigan. This actually hasn't been blocked yet. So you can see there's like little, the ends are woven in, but I just haven't trimmed them all the way down yet. There's a few little ends. But this is the Cleo cardigan by Rachel Knits Things on Instagram. This was a test knit I did. I used Hobby Diablo, which is a mohair blend. I can't remember what exactly 
is in it. It's a pretty low percentage of mohair and some like synthetic fibers, but it's fairly soft. It's not like next to face soft, but it doesn't bother me like on my arms. And it's a cardigan, so I'll be wearing a shirt under it. And if I needed to, I could wear a long sleeve shirt under it, but it's really not that scratchy. Um, and then I think I said, no, I didn't. This is the, sorry y'all. This is the dusty light blue colorway of the Hobby Diablo yarn. Look at the texture details on these stripes and then it goes on the body too so cute and then I picked these gorgeous buttons I found these on Etsy I'll link the shop down below there's better pictures of these on my Instagram it'll focus nope okay well you can kind of see those there maybe I'll put up the picture of me wearing it and the buttons and stuff since I didn't wear something that I could try this on for you but yeah, I finished, this is my first cardigan, I'm not going to put it over my sweatshirt, but this is my first ever cardigan that I knit, and I really loved the pattern. It is a lot of purling, because you're knitting flat back and forth, stockinette, the whole thing is stockinette, but you knit the two strands together, I'd also never knit with mohair, so that was an interesting experience. It was a little finicky, but it wasn't near as bad as I was expecting it to be. But, man, I really feel like I'm just, like, rambling and <laughs> saying a bunch of random things that don't make sense. Hopefully this makes sense. Finished object number four, Cleo Cardigan. Super cute. I have pictures on my Instagram. Highly recommend all of Rachel's patterns. I want to knit more of them. She has a sweater in testing right now. I think it's called the Clove Sweater that I cannot wait until it releases. I had too many things, as you'll see on my needles to test that one for her but I wanted to so badly it's so cute it's like a mock neck maybe turtleneck pullover very very cute but that's all my finished objects yay <laughs> okay now I have one half finished object this is also a test knit and you will notice from here on out that I've kind of slowed down on test knits because I have a lot of gift knitting plans and I've already started I will be showing you some of those um, but I just wanted to slow down on test knits because gift knits are kind of like, they have a deadline, you know, Christmas, <laughs> they have a deadline. So I didn't want to have like a ton of different deadlines that I had to keep track of because I want knitting to stay fun, you know? So this is my last test knit for a little while. It is still in testing, but, um, it was only a one sock test. So I finished this a while ago. <laughs> um, I think I finished this like halfway through August. I don't remember. But this is the Lacy Days Sock by Cassie Knits on Instagram. I have test knit for her before. She designed the Brighter Days Socks that you all have seen many times. Here's the sock. I haven't woven in my ends or anything, but, and this hasn't been blocked. Maybe I should put it, let me put this on a blocker for y'all. So you can see the lace pattern a little better. This is so cute and I cannot wait to wear these with a little pair of booties this fall because the lace will like peek up over the edge of the boots. Oh, so cute. Okay, now you can kind of, it's still kind of hard since I haven't blocked it, the lace out yet, but there you can see a little better. Lacy days, it's a little squiggly lace pattern. The lace was super fun and easy to remember, like the pattern repeats and stuff. So cute, here's my sock. You might remember these colors from my Margot socks. The very first test knit I ever did, I used these same yarn colors for Abby of Cozy Crafting. <clears throat> and I had a ton left over. I actually still have not knit the second sock of that pair. <laughs> but I have enough yarn left over. Like, look, they're like, they still look like full skeins. I have a ton of yarn left over. So I should have enough to do the second sock for this and the second sock for that pair. But the green is Farmer's Daughter Fiber Sock Squad in the Test of Time. I think this was the February colorway. And the white, gray, creamish color is by a brand that I'm no longer supporting, so I'm not going to share. But I just had it in my stash. So, yeah. It's just a nice, basic, you can find this anywhere, whitish, grayish, creamish color. And I really like this color combination. So that's exciting. Eventually, the second sock of this will get cast on, and then maybe I'll do the second sock of my Margot socks, finally. 
works in progress. This first work in progress really should be a half finished object. I just <laughs> haven't done like the last two rows yet. I actually have no idea how many rows are left, but this is another pair of socks. These are vanilla socks again. I knit these on nine inch, but I'm doing the toe on DPNs. And this yarn, y'all, this yarn, oh my goodness. Look how close I am to being done with the toe. Like why haven't I just finished this? Isn't this so cute? I can't get over it and like how the stripes change and the heel. And like I said, it'd be like pulled right there. Oh, it's so cute. This is Pitchfork Fiber, his disco collection. This is the colorway Boogie Wonderland. I think I shared this in the last episode as an acquisition. The cake is kind of a mess, but. Oh my goodness, this colorway is so fun and summery. That's kind of why I haven't gravitated towards it recently because this was like my last summery pair of socks. But I need to just finish them. This is sock number one. So as soon as I do the last few rows on the toe, graft it, then I'll be ready to cast on the second sock. So there's work in progress number one. I just, oh, I love it so much. I need to finish these because they're so cute and fun. And then I think we're just going to stick with socks. This is my last pair of socks I have to show you. This is what I've been working on at work. So I'll share about this a little bit more later, but I have a different role at work now and I'm working in the office at a desk. So it leaves me with a little more ability to knit in my downtime. So I ordered, <laughs> I work at UPS in Louisville. Um, which is on airport property. So we have to go through like TSA security in the morning and b believe it or not, the TSA security check to get into UPS is like a lot stricter than actually getting on a plane. Like I know you're allowed to have regular metal knitting needles and like small embroidery scissors and stuff on the plane. Can't have any of that going into UPS. So I ordered some bamboo. These are chow goos again nine inch us one 2.25 millimeter but these are their bamboo needles so that i could take them into work with me and i have been working on this pair of socks this yarn is loops and threads perfect pair it's like self-patterning yarn it's very similar to the first pair of socks that i ever knit for my husband these are for my husband and the colorway is called walk like a man i don't know what that means but that's the colorway I bought this yarn in New York. I had gone to Michael's with my sister-in-law Liz because our nephew wanted to learn how to knit and crochet. Liz crochets and I knit, obviously. And so we went there to buy some yarn for him to practice and like a crochet hook and a pair of knitting needles for him. And I got a couple skeins of this because I thought it would be nice for work knitting. And just in case something did happen to the yarn, like it got dirty or lost or something, I wanted some like cheap <laughs> sock yarn to take with me to work instead of some of my like prettier hand dyed yarns more expensive yarns those will be like at home and like taking around in the car sock projects so I think I said this is the colorway walk like a man by loops and threads perfect pair I have another skein that I'll show you in a minute but I am doing a three by one ribbed sock. So this is no one's pattern. I'm, I'm basically following the vanilla sock patterns from Crazy Sock Lady, but instead of doing stockinette on the leg and the foot, I'm doing three by one rib. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do the three by one rib on the bottom of the foot, or if I'm just gonna do it on the top of the foot and do stockinette on the bottom. Haven't decided yet, but I'm on the leg. I did two by two ribbing for the cuff. And then after 20 rounds of the cuff, I switched to the three by one ribbing. I just think this is really cute. I love the colors in the yarn. It's a little bit showing a little bit lighter than it is in real life. Oh, that's a little bit more accurate. But it reminds me of the woods and Joshua loves the woods. So these are for him. I feel like I was gonna say something else about these. But I don't remember. Oh, I'm doing the three by one rib because his other socks that I've made him, I think I've made him two pairs of socks now, they fit him, but he has pretty large calves and his ankles aren't small, but they're like normal size and his calves are large. And so these hit him like right before his calf starts getting really big. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but then they fit, like I can't take the stitch down, 
stitch count down any because they would be too tight up here at the cuff but sometimes the ankle on his socks are a little loose so I'm doing the three by one rib to see if that'll like hug his leg a little better without having to do anything weird with changing stitch counts within the sock because I'd like to be able to keep these as like thought free as possible um, and a three by one rib is really mindless for me it's like just barely more thought than doing plain stockinette all the way around so we'll see how this turns out I'm excited to see if he likes these likes the fit of these better um, and I might try these for myself too so that is my last sock whip my I think this is my oldest whip maybe not I don't know I know I talked about this last time because I got my big order of explorer knits um, into the wild yarn in and I've been wanting to cast on this sweater for forever. I got the idea from Coley of Paisley Knits. She knit a Sunday sweater by Petite Knit out of Explorer Knits Italy collection. I think it was the Roma colorway and it just looked so beautiful. <laughs> I wanted to knit one so badly um, but I couldn't get the Roma colorway because I wasn't a knitter at the time that she released that collection. So when she released the Into the Wild collection, I was like, I have to pick one of these colorways to do a Sunday sweater. And I did. I got the Gentle Natured colorway. Here's one of my skeins of it. Oh, this is showing up way brighter than it actually is. It's like washing it out, but it's so gorgeous. I'll insert a picture of the um, skeins that I bought and I got them. Here's another skein of it because I'm alternating skeins. And this is my Sunday sweater. So y'all have not seen this at all, I don't think. I think I had just bought the yarn when I showed it to you. I don't know what side's the front and what's the back. <laughs> but it looks a little tiny because it's all ribbing up here. But oh my gosh. Okay, I need to finish this. I've set this down for a while and this is looking at it right now on camera is motivating me to finish it. Look how gorgeous. It's got a folded over collar. It's the first time I've done that, I think. And I love it. I modified my other sweater that I'll show you to have a folded over neckline as well because I just love the way it looks. And then it's got this ribbing for the yoke. Looks like a sunburst pattern, it's so pretty. And then, okay, so I'm a little afraid I'm gonna run out of yarn. <laughs> I think I did my math wrong and I'm not quite sure how that happened. So basically what I did was, I knit the yoke, I split for the sleeves, I started knitting the body until I finished the skein that I was on, and then I started the one of the sleeves. So right now I'm on a sleeve. Oh, did I drop a stitch? No, I didn't. Okay. Right now, I'm knitting a sleeve. I bought some 12 inch circular needles so that I could do needles with small circumference because it was driving me nuts doing the magic loop, especially alternating skeins. I'm using the helical method of alternating skeins. I'll have a short tutorial for that link down below if you've never heard of it. Um, but yeah, so I'm knitting the sleeves. I'll knit both sleeves and then I can just finish the body with whatever yarn I have left. And that way I have the length of sleeves that I want and I can just have a like more cropped sweater if I run out of yarn early, as opposed to knitting the body full length and then running out of yarn like halfway through a sleeve, if that makes any sense. I would rather have a cropped sweater than shorter sleeves. So that's the plan. Gotta finish this sleeve, do the other sleeve. Oh my gosh, why is that blowing out so bad? <laughs> finish this sleeve, do the other sleeve, and then I'll finish the body. Right now it's coming, if it was on, okay, my belly button's like right there. So as long as I have enough yarn to like get like an inch past my belly button, that's where like I'm comfortable with my crops hitting, I'm sure I have plenty of yarn to do that. So I think we'll be good, but that's the plan. And this yarn is so squishy and delicious. This is, um, I can't remember the name of the base, but it's her cashmere DK base. And this sweater is just like so drapey and bouncy and soft and delicious. And I'm so excited to wear it. So this is motivating me to keep working on this. <clears throat> so that's my first sweater whip. And then 
The next thing I cast on is almost done. I want to finish this tonight. This is my first gift knit of the year. I'm not going to say who it's for, just in case they watch. I'm not sure if they do or not. But I am knitting a Starflake shawl by Stephen West. This is going to be really hard to show, so I'll show you the picture of it first. Um, here's a picture. I'm sure you all have heard of Stephen West in this pattern. This was his mystery knit along pattern for 2019, I think. And I have wanted to knit it for like a year since I started knitting. You guys, I started knitting a year ago this month. I don't remember what day it was, but if I can figure out by like pictures and stuff, then I'll have to do like a little post on Instagram. But I started knitting a year ago in October, which is so exciting. But anyways, this is the Starflake shawl. This is gonna be kind of hard to show because it's all scrunched up on the needles. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Like I don't want to give this away because <laughs> it's so pretty. Here it is. This, I've been knitting on this fairly monogamously for the past few weeks. But this was my first time doing brioche. And I didn't mess up. I missed like some increases somewhere and had to fudge. Like I'm gonna have to sew that hole closed. And like right there, you can see I did like a double increase because I forgot to increase right here. But I didn't have to try to frog any of my brioche and I'm so proud of myself. I took it real slow because I was very concerned about messing up. But it's so pretty. Look at the, it's hard to see, but the little brioche zigzags. And then we've got a little stripey section with eyelets. And I just finished the last row of eyelets right here. I don't know if you'll be able to see right there. And I am now on to the border section, which is just on here. It's his big, like, thick section of dark blue, which mine will be in the orange colorway. And then I will be done. I really want to finish this tonight. But... We'll see, because there are many stitches on. Oh, doesn't this just look so beautiful? This is the wrong side. So you can see the light pink is more prominent in the brioche. This is the right side. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm so excited to be done with this. The yarn I am using, the light pink peachy-ish colorway. Oh, that's really blown out. It's warmer than that and a little deeper. Oh, that's a little more accurate. These, these, <laughs> I may have shared these in acquisitions, but this is oak and fiber. These are some one of a kinds from a sale that she had. So there's no colorway name and I don't think you can order this color, but I had three skeins of it. You only need two skeins for the shawl. And this is, I have a ton left of my second skein. Um, Cause I'm done with this color, I think, except for the bind off. I think the I-cord bind off is striped. Yeah, there's a striped. I don't know if you can see that on there. There's a striped I-cord bind off, so I'll use a little bit of this for the bind off, but I have a ton left over of my second skein. The burnt orange I'm using, you could go back if you wanted to in some other uh, podcast episodes I've talked about this, but again, I'm not supporting this brand anymore, so I'm not going to have them linked down below or mention the name, but it's just a deep burnt orange color. Again, that's blowing it out a lot. I don't know where I can show it. That's a little more accurate up here. I was using this to knit a wool and honey sweater that I cast on like very early on. I think you can go see that in like my first or second episode ever. Um, and then it was going to be a gift for someone. And then I frogged it because I was like, Sierra, you're so dumb. You've only been knitting for a month and you're trying to knit a sweater, your first sweater ever, and have it be a gift for someone who you can't like measure their body or have them try it on. Anyways, I just decided that was a bad idea, so I frogged it. I wasn't very far in it at all. I'd gotten, like, that far into the yoke. Frogged it and thought that it looked gorgeous with this color and decided to do it for the Starflake shawl. So, here it is. It's almost done. It will definitely be done the next time you see it. And this is Christmas gift number one. I'm so excited. I'm pretty proud of myself that I'm starting this early and getting a big project like this out of the way. But this is super fun to knit. I feel like it really flew for how big and like, not complicated, but nothing in here is complicated, but detailed, how big and detailed it is. So that's exciting. And then my last, sorry, my nose is so itchy. I keep doing this. I promise I'm not picking my nose. <laughs> it's just itchy. 
Um, sorry for all my notebook noise. My last work in progress I'm very excited about. This is my Halloween sweater for the year. I say that like I've been doing Halloween sweaters, but this is only the first year that I've knit. So this year I wanted to cast on a Halloween sweater that was kind of spoopy. Um, there are honestly a lot of spookier patterns, but for some reason I was just really drawn to this one and I wanted to knit this pattern for forever. So I cast on, let me see if there's a picture, the Coleoptera sweater by More Thunder. Oh my goodness, isn't it so cute? I know this isn't technically spooky because they're like beetles, not spiders, but I don't know. It just seems very Halloween-ish to me. And I am using, the yarn I'm using is Knitting for Olive, their Heavy Merino, which I think is a worsted weight. And the pattern calls for DK weight. Um, I have not said like the sizes that I'm knitting in anything. I'm knitting the size small in my Sunday sweater, which I think is like a 41 and one fourth inch bust, which is like four to five, no, five to six inches of positive ease on me. The shawl obviously doesn't have a size. I think that's the only thing I missed. I think this pattern, back to this pattern, I think this pattern calls for DK weight. Um, but I'm using worsted weight. I'm kind of a tight knitter and I liked the fabric that I was getting when I did my swatch. So I'm just going with it. This is Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the colorway Marzipan. It's like a, again, like a whitish, grayish, creamish color. This would actually be a great alternative to the color I have in my, oh my gosh, they're almost identical to the color I have in my Lacy Day socks. This is just a little bit lighter. They're even more similar in person than they're showing up on camera. So if you wanted to get the marzipan colorway from Knitting for Olive, that'd be a good dupe. I don't know if you can say dupe because it might be more expensive, but you know what I'm saying. Marzipan, and then I'm using copper and coal. So this is my Halloween sweater. It's Halloween-ish while still being fairly neutral. So this is orangish, brownish, tannish, but it's not very like bright in your face. I think they look nice together. And so I'm using the marzipan as my main color, and then the coal will obviously be the beetles, and then the copper is the little like triangle pattern. And this is how far I've gotten. It's kind of scrunched up. I need to switch it to longer needles. I just started the beetle chart. So there's the very tips of some beetle legs right there. I did the first chart already. This is so fun. And then like I said on this pattern, it's supposed to only have like four rounds of ribbing for the collar, I think. Let me look in the her picture you can see because it's kind of a wide neck. So it's a really short amount of ribbing on the collar and I wanted to pull it in a little bit. And so without having to change stitch counts or anything, I just did it double the length and then folded it over and that will cinch it in a little bit more. And also it just looks so nice. Doesn't it look so nice? I just love it. If you all haven't done a folded over neckline, you need to try it. So this is my Coleoptera sweater. I'm hoping to have this finished by Halloween so that I can wear it on Halloween. But I have a lot of other things going on. So like knitting projects and stuff. So if I don't, it won't be the end of the world. But that is the goal. And that is my last work in progress. I do have a new category this week. I'd frogged something and it's actually very sad. <laughs> um, if you've been watching for the past few episodes, you'll know I was working on a sweater called the Black Sheep Sweater. It was a design by Center for Knit and Crochet. They had rewritten a pattern for a sweater that Princess Diana wore back in the day. Iconic, right? I love the royal family. Specific, well, I don't love the royal family. I love I'm fascinated by the royal family and I love certain members of the royal family. The first of which being Princess Diana. I'm obsessed with her. So when they said that they were te needed testers for this pattern, I jumped right on it. I was super excited. I was using some, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. I was using Knit Picks palette yarn and I had picked like a pink for my main color because Princess Diana's favorite color is pink and my favorite color is pink and I thought that would be fun. Um, but basically, one, I should have picked a better pink. I don't love the pink that I chose. It's a little primary for me. 
I like more like subdued colors. And two, it was all over color work, an all over color work sweater. I'll insert a picture of it here. Um, on very small needles. I think the pattern was written to be knit on like a one and a half and a three. A one and a half for the ribbing and a three for the body. And I went up just because I'm a tighter knitter and did a two on the ribbing and a four on the body, but it's still so tiny with super thin fingering weight yarn. And it was just taking forever. Like I never even got through the first row of sheep. It was taking so long. So I knew, I knew I had set it down for like a super long time and I knew I wasn't going to come back to it. So I just frogged it and I'm actually using some of the yarn. I'm going to use it for something else that I'll show you here in a little bit. Yeah. So I frogged it. I think maybe at some point down the road, with some different yarn, I might try to modify the pattern for like DK weight and knit myself one because I was so excited about having that sweater in my wardrobe and being able to wear something that Princess Diana wore. So maybe that'll be a project for post holidays when I don't have any gift knitting going on and stuff. Maybe like the beginning of next year, that would be fun. But yeah, that sweater project is no more, which is very sad but it had to be done. I was, I was never going to finish it. It was taking forever. <laughs> okay. There are three things I want to share for future cast ons. The first is I'm knitting another Starflake shawl for someone else this Christmas. And I have the yarn for it already. Again, I'm not going to share who this is for just in case they watch this, but I am using Knitting for Olive again. This is my first time. The Coley Out Terra sweater is my first time using Knitting for Olive yarn and I love it. They have the prettiest colors. It's fairly affordable yarn. It does come from Denmark, I think. So the shipping is a little expensive, but it, it didn't take that long to get here. And I really love it. I love their colors. So check out Knitting for Olive, but I will be knitting the second, ooh, this cream color is getting really blown out. My second Starflake shawl in these two colorways. So this is their fingering weight, which is just merino. I think it's 100% extra fine merino. Um, this is the colorway Claret, Claret. I don't, I'm just realizing I've never said that word out loud. I've read it a ton, you know, like the red shade. There it is. It's not in focus, but anyways, I don't think I've ever said that word out loud, so I don't actually know how you say it, but it's just this like deep kind of rusty red color. And then this is just called cream. It's just a basic cream color. So these will be another starch like shawl for another Christmas present. And I'm casting this on the second that I bind off my other starch like shawl. Um, since I already have the needles and everything ready and the pattern, I'm just going to cast this on as soon as I bind the other one off. So that is my first one. And then I'm knitting a few Musselberg hats this year for Christmas. I knit a Musselberg for my sister and I've really been wanting to cast one on for myself and for my husband, Josh. Um, but they're just so easy and mindless and in my mind, a little better than socks as gifts because you don't have to know anyone's shoe size to be able to knit it for them. It's just a hat. You can like guesstimate how big their head is, um, like based on their age and stuff and knit them a hat. And it's just stocking it in the round for like miles and miles. I keep saying like in this episode, I'm very sorry. Um, so yeah, I'm going to knit a few Musselbergs this year for Christmas. And I would like to cast one on as soon as I have a couple of these, um, like half finished pairs of socks off the needles. So, I have a few skeins. I'll, sh I'll save that for acquisitions, but I'm gonna use some of my sock squad yarn to knit those because there have been some really beautiful, like solid colors um, that I've gotten in the sock squad. So a lot of those are gonna turn into Musselberg hats and I'll be casting one of those on soon, sometime this month. And then the last future cast on is very exciting and everyone in the knitting world is talking about it. I am finally going to get to participate in my first West Knits Mystery Knit Along. I'm so excited. I had just started learning to knit when it was happening last year. So there's obviously no way I was going to do that last year. So this is my first year participating. I'm so excited. I am even more excited because this shawl pattern is inspired by dance and choreography. If you all don't know, Stephen West used to be a dancer. I'm a dancer. 
I grew up dancing my whole life. I was a dance major in college, so I'm very excited. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I have loved every Stephen West pattern that I've knit so far and just think he's a genius, so I'm confident that I will love it even though mysteries usually make me uncomfortable. I don't know that there's any other designer that I trust. Andrea Mowry, maybe. Oh, can you hear my stomach growling? I need to eat lunch. Anyways, I don't know if there are a lot of other designers that I would trust enough with a mystery because I'm such a control freak, <laughs> but I'm very excited. So that will lead me into acquisitions because I have my yarn for it. I am using, I desperately wanted to get a hand dyed yarn kit for this knit along but let's be honest five skeins of hand dyed yarn is a lot and as you can see i've been buying a lot of yarn recently so i held back i was going to do some stash diving but a lot of my solid colors i'm using for musclebergs and stuff and they didn't really go together so i decided to go to knit picks tried and true i love knit picks yarn um, and I'm using the gloss fingering, which I've never tried before. It is 70% merino wool and 30% silk. So the drape on this thing is going to be insane and I'm so excited. And this is a five color shawl. So I am using this color palette is very heavily inspired by Emily Curtis, M. Wee Kurt on Instagram, 108 stitches on YouTube. That's the name of her podcast. I'll have her link down below. Um, but she uses these colors a lot and normally these are not colors I gravitate towards But I have just been loving them recently, especially for fall So here are my colors. This is pine. It's like a deep dark green It's a little more vibrant than it's showing up here in real life. And then this is Where's the color? Rosemary It's like a lighter dusty sagey green Erdy, if you might say. <laughs> and then this is Wharf, which is like a pretty sea foamy green blue, like a dusty one. And then Harvest, which is like, I think it's, it's showing up a little more like orange on screen than it really is. It's a lot more golden brown in real life. And then my fifth color, I just got a big skein of the Bear. So this is just undyed gloss fingering yarn. It's so just like a bare cream color. It's blowing out a ton, but I don't know why it comes like this. I know it's probably easier than having to untwist the hank because normally you'd be buying bare yarn to dye it, but <laughs> it just made me laugh that it showed up like this. So this will be my, oh, I should show you this side. My shawlography for the mystery knit along this year. And I'm so excited. Isn't this so Emily, this color palette? It really is, isn't it? I'm so excited. Okay, so that I'm casting on on October 8th. <clears throat> That's when the first clue comes out. So, yes, I'm very excited. So that's my first acquisition. I got my yarn for the mystery knit along. And then we're just going to move through this pile that I have here behind me. It's been two months and I have bought a lot of yarn. And I will not be buying any yarn for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> my husband says amen. The, ooh, oh my goodness, I need to readjust. Okay, the next thing I'll show you, I guess, is my yarnable yarn. So I've gotten two of my Yarnable boxes since the last time we talked. I did end up canceling my Yarnable subscription just because I need to cut down on the amount of yarn that I'm buying. And I have realized over this past year of knitting um, that I really would rather spend my money on things that I like have already seen and really love. And I would rather spend my money on like sweater quantities or shawl quantities of yarn than on sock skeins. So I'm going to keep my Sock Squad, the Farmer's Daughter Fiber subscription. I'm going to keep that through the end of the year, but I don't think I'll do it next year. And I've already canceled my Yarnable. I did love it. I think it's an incredible subscription. And I love the colorways that I've gotten. But I just think I, one, I like buying boring, boring yarn, like solid colors, uh, like this. Um, more than I like, like crazy variegated colors. And if I do want a crazy variegated color, I'll just buy one without having to like 
without getting so many, basically. I was just ending up with a lot of stash that was like variegated, brightly colored sock yarn that's just not my jam all the time. I do like it every once in a while, but you know what I'm saying. I was just getting too much. So anyways, I'm probably not going to do any sock subscriptions next year. <clears throat> But I do have two yarnables to share with you. So this, I think this is August. This is August. The colorway is called Sweet and Sour. And it's this really pretty, this is so summery. I might save this for a while. Um, pink and orange, variegated, speckled colorway. These will definitely be socks for me or maybe my sister if she steals it. That's really pretty. And then September's, I love this one. It's it is gorgeous. September's is called Born to be Mild. Oh, isn't that so pretty? I think it was inspired by like the sky. I don't know. That's what it reminds me of in the fall. Like the brown is like the trees, the tree branches and the sky and the wind. Oh, it's so pretty. I love that. So that will also be socks for sure. And her yarn um, I think her name's Cheryl of Hypnotic Yarns that does the yarnable boxes is so soft and squishy. I love it. So yeah, those are my two yarnable boxes I've gotten since the last time we spoke. I have gotten three sock squad orders since the last time we talked, I think. I don't think I showed you this other one. So two of these are going to be Musselberg hats for sure. This is August and this is the colorway Cool as a Cucumber. It's so this really pretty cucumber green solid and the gray mini. And this is on the bear paw sock base, which has yak in it. It's 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon. I just think that's so cool. I think the tests of time, this green that I used, is also the bear paw sock base, and I love it. It feels a little more rustic, not scratchy at all. It's just not like, you know. Just feels a little more sturdy but i really like it for socks especially so this is going to be a musselberg hat for someone eventually september's is fantastic mr fox very fall this orange variegated it's got like orange and golds and brown speckles in it very pretty and it came with this brown mini and then October's, I am obsessed with. I'm keeping this for myself. This is going to be a Musselberg for me. It's called Pucker Up. Oh, oh my goodness. It's even deeper in person than it's showing up on screen. Oh, oh, like right there is pretty much what it looks like. This deep burgundy red and this like dusty pinky gray mini. I don't know if, what I'm going to do with the mini. If I'm going to use it with this or keep it for something else. I don't know how I would use it. I could maybe put like a couple stripes in like the brim of my Musselberg or something. I don't know yet, but this is going to be a Musselberg for me. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. I gasped very loudly when I opened this package. So those are the three sock squads that I received since the last time we saw each other. Now, ooh, this one's really fun. Next one, I I think Explorinance is my favorite yarn dyer. I think I've decided. I just can't. I can't stay away from everything she does. It's really dangerous for my wallet. But when I heard, if you follow her, you know she does the National Park Yarn Club. I think she does it for like six months at a time, or at least she did this year. And every month she released a colorway that was inspired by a different national park. And then she also will choose one of the months to be an international national park. So from a different country than the United States. And this year she did the Serengeti National Park. And I about lost my mind. Um, one, because <laughs> I'm half black. Half of my family, back in the way back, originated from Africa. And so African culture has always been really fascinating to me and a lot of the people in my family. And we're trying to figure out what country that we're from originally. It's kind of hard to do, like with the generic DNA tests, like 23andMe and stuff, it'll only tell you like the region and not the specific country. So there are a couple DNA tests we found that like my parents or my grandparents could take that would narrow it down to the country. So hopefully soon we'll do that and be able to find out. But all of that to say, I'm obsessed with African culture and like going on an African safari is 
huge on my bucket list as it is for many people because it's just a really fascinating part of the world. Anyways, I had to have the Serengeti colorway is what I'm saying. So I bought, and I had no idea what it was gonna look like when I bought it, it was a mystery. Um, but I trusted her because she's a genius and she did not disappoint. So here it is. Oh, oh, I'm so glad it's like showing up for you on camera. It is so beautiful. I got three skeins. I think I'm going to make a Bennett sister shawl, but without mohair, just do this all the way across. And I think I might save this for spring knitting because is this just not the most beautiful springtime colorway you've ever seen in your life? I'm gonna take this off so you can see the whole beauty of it. It's got blues and greens and like soft pinks and cream and brown and oh, it's not showing up as beautiful as it, oh, that's really blown out. As beautiful as it is in real life, but it's showing up pretty well. And I just love it. I feel like, I feel like if you had described this color to me, I wouldn't have been like, ooh, I need that. But when I got it in the mail and opened it, I, I about lost my mind. How many times have I said that in this episode? But I did, I about lost my mind because it's so stinking gorgeous and I'm never gonna get this ball band back. Oh, there we go. It's so pretty. So I have two other skeins of this in fingering weight and I'm going to be making a shawl with this probably in the spring and I'm so excited because it's so beautiful. <laughs> then I have, let's see, let's see, what next? Ooh, I ordered my very first skein of Desert Vista Dye Works. If you follow Crazy Sock Lady, I'm sure you've heard of her and maybe you've just heard of her because you've heard of her, but she dyes all kinds of incredible self-striping yarn. And the greatest thing about her self-striping yarn is like all the colorways are inspired by something. But like she has like all different kinds of movie colorways, book colorways, food colorways, like superhero colorways, all kinds of colorways. And she was getting rid of some, I think she like does some seasonally. And at the end of the summer she was she had like a last call for some of her summer colorways and I could not resist this one. Now I know you all might be surprised because you don't think these are my colors, but let me tell you, this colorway is DJ Jazzy Jeff. And if you know me, you know that I'm obsessed with the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff. We had their CDs growing up and I just, I had to have it. I had to have it. I'm gonna make some fresh print socks with these. And I'm, I'm so excited. Isn't this so fun? Oh my goodness. It just makes me so happy. It makes me so happy. So that's that. I keep thinking I'm, I like should be done talking to you guys because it's been so long, but I still have so much to show you. What's next? Oh, I mentioned that I had gone to Michael's in New York with my sister-in-law Liz, and my nephew had asked if I would teach him how to knit and if she would teach him how to crochet, so we did. But he also asked me if I would knit him and his brother Silas a sweater. So while I was at Michael's, I got some yarn to knit them sweaters for probably for Christmas. And if not Christmas, then I'll definitely have it done by his birthday. Me and my nephew actually have the same birthday. We're born exactly 20 years apart. So his birthday's in January. So if I don't finish it by Christmas, because I have a lot of Christmas gifts to knit, then I will give it to him for his birthday. His favorite color is red. So he requested red and I, I just grabbed this giant yarn inspirations. I think this is 100% acrylic. Let me see. 100% acrylic. This is the Yarn Inspirations Karen One Pound. Um, it's huge. I think it's like, this is probably worth Okay, the angle might have slightly changed. I just had the most terrifying experience that I know other people have had where my video just quit and took me to my home screen. And when I opened my photos app, there was no video there, but then I deleted a bunch of stuff and it magically appeared. So I think we're good. I'm gonna try to rush through this because I don't know how much storage I have left. Um, I did delete some things, but we'll see. Anyways, I was saying, I got this to knit my nephew a sweater. It is 100% acrylic. This is either DK or worsted weight, I'm not sure, but it is 812 yards. How many grams is it? 453 grams. So this is like four and a half regular skeins of yarn. It will be plenty. Like I will probably have to make in like a hat and who knows what else with this to use this up. So I got this for him because his favorite color is red and he requested red. And then for Silas, his little brother, I asked him, <laughs> I asked him, my oldest nephew, 
he's gonna be six in January. Um, he's the one that wanted to learn how to knit and asked me to knit him and his brother a sweater and stuff. And so I asked him what his favorite color was and he said red. And then I said, okay, well, do you know what Silas's favorite color is? Silas is like two and a half. I said, does he have a favorite color? And he was like, no, he doesn't have a favorite color. He doesn't really say much. <laughs> Made me laugh so hard. Uh, anyways. Uh, so I got gray for him because I know that my sister-in-law will appreciate gray. And I didn't... I thought about getting like a nice deep green or like maybe a blue. But then if they wear them together, it just like... I knew that it would bother my sister to have like two primary colors together. I know the green isn't a primary color, but you know what I'm saying. So I just got gray for Silas because he doesn't care what color his sweater is. And I knew that my sister would appreciate it, so... These will be sweaters for them. These things are huge. <laughs> They're so big. Um, but yeah, so I got those in New York. And then I also, this is the other pair, or the other skein of the Loops and Threads Perfect Pair that I got. I'm using this yarn for Josh's socks, the ones that I've been taking to work. So I got this colorway for me. I just love these colors. thought it was really cute. This is the colorway... What if it was walking like a woman? That'd be hilarious. This is color 01026 Promised Land. Ooh, I like that. That's really pretty. So these will be socks for me. This will be my next work pair of socks once I finish Joshua's socks. And that's all the stuff that I got while I was in New York. And then, okay, last but not least, if you follow Explore Knits or Teeny Button or Red Door Fiber Studio, Kate, um, you will have seen the craze over A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is a book series by Sarah J. Mass. Kate basically inspired the entire knitting community to read this book series, and if you haven't read it, you 100% should. It is so good. And she released in the middle of September a whole yarn collection inspired by the book series and she collaborated with Explore Knits, Allie of Explore Knits, and oh my gosh, why can't I remember her name? Teeny Button. Can't remember her name. I'm gonna put it on the screen right now. I'm gonna feel like an idiot when I look it up later because I totally know her name. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> when I'm on camera, I just forget everyone's name. But anyways, she collaborated with them and they all came up with gorgeous colorways inspired by the book series and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't not, you know? I just, I had to, okay? So, I restrained myself from Kate's release um, because I knew I wanted to get a sweater quantity of Allie's colorways. So from Kate at Red Door Fiber Studio, I got her mini skein set of all of her tonals, or as they are now affectionately known, Ronald's. <laughs> You'll get that if you follow her on Instagram. So this is the mini skein set. All of these are named after a character in the book, except for this one. This one's kind of like inspired by the love story of the main characters. So here it is. There's nine colorways. With this, I am planning to make a Luminaria shawl. Luminaria? Luminaria? I'm not sure. So I'm actually using the Knit Picks palette yarn that I was using in my black sheep sweater. This was gonna be the little sheepies. It's just a white cream color. I'm gonna use this as my main color with all these minis and make the Luminaria shawl. And actually it calls for 10 minis and there are only nine here. So when I got my order from Explore Knits, I ordered a sock set of her Court of Dreams colorway, which is so gorgeous. Oh, it's so beautiful. And it came with this mini, which I'm going to use, instead of using it with the sock, with the this yarn and socks, I'm going to add it to my mini skein set. I think it works really well. It's so hard to show all of these. And also I'm giggling internally at the, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyways, there it is. This is the one from Explore Knit with all of its friends that'll go in my shawl. And then, so I got this to make socks, probably, out of the Court of Dreams. And then I got five skeins of DK into the Stars Who Listen, which is not going to show up as well on camera as I would like for it to, but it is the most beautiful dark, deep, teal shade. And I got a sweater quantity. I haven't decided on a pattern yet. 
but oh, it's so gorgeous. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's not going to show up on camera as beautiful as it truly is. It's like vibrant and deep and just lovely all at the same time. It's like shining. I can't, it's just so beautiful. And I just want to hug it all day long. So this is my last acquisition. I saved the best for last because I'm so so stinking excited about this one because the color is gorgeous and two because <laughs> the name of it makes me emo because <laughs> i just love the book so much so i i wish you all i'm gonna turn the camera around so you all can see this mess around me but that is all of the knitting content finally we got through all of the knitting and acquisitions and everything and i have no idea if anything i said in this episode made sense not a clue not a clue feel like my brain is all over the place. I feel like I kind of black out. Uh, who was I watching that talks about this? Caroline of Caroline's Knits. I think it was her that was talking about it. That like sometimes when you film podcasts like this, you kind of like black out while you're filming. And then as soon as you're done filming, you're like, did I say anything that makes sense to anyone? That totally happens to me. It's happening right now. <laughs> but that's all of the knitting content. This is an extremely long episode. I promise I will do my best. I don't promise that I will have an episode up, but I promise I will do my very best to have an episode up within, within a month. I would like to be doing them twice a month, but I for sure don't want to go more than a month without posting again. Life has just been crazy. I guess we'll do a little bit of chit-chatting since we're already here and we've been hanging out for so long. Um, basically, life was just super busy the last two months. My husband and I were working a ton of night shifts um, because it was open and available for us to do so for a few weeks there, and we were trying to pay off our debt, um, our student loan debt, quickly. So we did that. We were working a ton of nights, and as you can imagine, I was just exhausted from <laughs> double shifting a ton. So I wasn't filming it all then, and then my mom and dad were moving. They moved about two hours away, so we were helping them on a lot of evenings and a couple of weekends, driving back and forth and just helping them move. So I didn't have a lot of free time to knit. And then we did end up paying off all of our student loans, which is very excited. Very excited. <laughs> very exciting. Um, we're debt free, yay! Which is just like, it's a huge deal. If you know me personally, you know that we've been working towards this goal for like two and a half years. It's very important to us and it's just a huge burden. A weight lifted off our shoulders to be done with it. We feel like millionaires, even though we're very much not millionaires. Um, so that's very exciting. That happened at like the end of August. And then a few weeks ago, we went to New York. Um, like I was talking about earlier, um, Josh's oldest brother and his wife and our two nephews live out there and so his other older brother and his wife, and then Josh and I and the two dogs all went up to New York to meet them up there, and we hung out up there for like 10 days, and it was wonderful. It was so good. The boys went hunting, the boys, the men, <laughs> went hunting and camping for the first half of the week and had a ton of fun. They were trying to get a bear, but they didn't, didn't see any bear. But they hunted some squirrels and like went catfishing and chopped some firewood and did all those manly things in the outdoors <laughs> and it was just so much fun to be there <clears throat> like we really didn't even do anything like special or exciting like we didn't go on any fun excursions we didn't even go to the city the city is my new york city is my favorite place in the entire world and i was having such a good time just being with family that josh and i decided not to do our day trip to the city that's how much fun i was having so it was so nice to be there and relaxing and good for Josh and I to have a week off of work, especially after like running ourselves into the ground, basically trying to pay off all our student loans. It was worth it, but it was definitely nice to have a break and like just be outside and be with family and all that. It was great. So now I'm back. I have started a new role at work, which is exciting. Um, it doesn't really change like my hours or anything, but it's just exciting. It's a new new role. I like it a lot better than my old role, so that's fun. And hopefully things will be getting back to normal in my YouTube space, uploading a little more regularly. I know I've never been super regular on here, but hopefully it won't be over two months again. Fingers crossed. Oh, I did want to ask you guys. <clears throat> I wanted to ask y'all if you... <laughs> Hi, boomies. 
If you would be interested in seeing a video of how I'm planning all of my gift knitting for the year, like picking patterns and planning like when I'm gonna try to cast on each thing and have things done by, if that's interesting to you, let me know. I love those kind of videos. So if you would also like to see them, let me know and I will try to film that for you soon. And also I've been getting the itch to get back into drawing and illustrating. I think I've mentioned this before, but I had an Etsy shop for like calligraphy and illustration and stuff. And I put it on pause for a while since I was so busy with work, but I've just really been getting the itch to start drawing again. And so I was thinking about doing some like knitting related prints and stickers and stuff. So if that is of any interest to you, let me know, because that would be fun. I'm probably gonna draw them anyways, but I'll make them for myself. But if you guys are interested too, then maybe I'll put some up for you all to buy them. So, I think that's everything. I've kept you for long enough. My mouth is very dry <laughs> from talking for so long. I'm gonna clean up this giant mess and hang out with these puppies before I have to go get my husband from work. So, yeah. I hope you all enjoyed. It was so good to talk to you guys again. <laughs> she thinks I'm talking to someone on the phone. <laughs> it was so good to talk to you guys again. I'm excited to be back and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Say bye puppies. <laughs> I almost forgot to show you all this mess. A basket. I just was like throwing stuff everywhere. Look at this. My patterns are all a mess. Oh my goodness. Who's gonna clean all this up, huh? Who's gonna clean all this up? <laughs>